All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to evaluate some public opinion data. Kind of. All right, play the music. All right, so can you trust public opinion polls? We're going to answer that question, but before we do that, let's talk about how they are used. Well, for one thing, uh, they get reported on quite a bit in the news. Now, there is some fear that this might actually create something known as a bandwagon effect, where people might be influenced and their opinions might be influenced by seeing the polling result that's telling them what other opi people's opinions are. So they might be on the fence about two political candidates, and then they see that one of their preferred candidates is rising in support while the other is falling, and there is some evidence to show that people actually might be more likely to then jump on the bandwagon of the candidate doing better and start to also move away from the candidate who's doing worse. So this is a weird one because just the act of reporting the public opinion polling data can influence public opinion, which means that that can be a really powerful and somewhat dangerous tool, in fact. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, another thing is that politicians might look at public opinion data. They often do. We know that congressmen have a desire to get reelected, and as such, it is sometimes necessary for them to try to please their voters and to vote with the public opinion of their constituents, the people that they represent. So, seeing polling opinion data, it can definitely cause them to be more likely to support or to oppose policies depending on that data. Now, again, this doesn't mean that a new poll comes out and it's 52-48 that they're going to switch their opinion all of a sudden. No, it's not saying that. But if there is firm, consistent, unified opinion on an issue to show overwhelmingly, wow, people are really for or really against this, it definitely can have an impact on whether certain legislation does in fact get passed. So it can affect politicians and cause them to actually tweak or adjust their positions. Um, candidates might talk more or talk less about certain issues if they find out, ah, people don't really agree with me on that, maybe I shouldn't bring it up quite as much. So these are just a few ways that public opinion does matter and that polling can affect political outcomes. Now, the other thing we want to talk about is, well, can we trust public opinion polling data? So we need to consider the quality of these opinion polls. Again, if they are scientifically valid, they've done everything we talked about in the last video with a sufficient sample size, a random stratified sample with a margin of error, all of these things, um, there should be some reliability to that poll. So what does that term reliability mean? Well, in this context, it means something that is sustainable, something that's repeatable. If they take that poll again two days from now with nothing changing, so no like major scandal or event happening, would they get consistent results or not? If the results aren't consistent or reliable, well, that would suggest there might be some kind of problem. But if we have reliable results within a margin of error, that is something that we can, again, reasonably look at and take to mean, all right, this suggests something. We don't want to take any one poll to be fact, because that would be foolish. We know that they all have margins of error, and there could be questions about whether they were, in fact, done scientifically in a valid way. Now, another term here is veracity. We want to consider the veracity of a poll. And what that just means is accurate. Is the poll accurate? So, first of all, are you getting the same results over and over, or similar results within the margin of error? reliable, consistent, and after the election, is it accurate? Did it predict the way that it said it was supposed to? So if you think about 2016, there were definitely some things that were wrong in those polls. For one thing, it does seem that most polls underestimated Trump's level of support, uh, particularly in Rust Belt states, and they underestimated how many Trump voters would actually show up and vote. So those do appear to be problems with the polling. On the other hand, most polls were pretty consistent that Hillary Clinton would win the popular vote, and she did, in fact, win the popular vote. Uh, so that's something that, again, it's hard to say that the polls failed when she did win by, what was it, 2.9% in the popular vote, and that was about what most polls were suggesting. She was going to win by about 2-3% to of the vote, and that is what happened. So the point is, it's difficult. And again, while we want to be hesitant and skeptical of any single poll, when we have a large number of, pollings, of polls taking place, uh, they do give us a decent snapshot. So I'm not here bashing polls, neither am I praising them and telling you to always believe public opinion polls. I don't think either of those are the right idea. Look at a large number of polls 
and through aggregating them, we can kind of have a decent idea. Now, it's important to point out that in modern times, there are new struggles and challenges facing pollsters. Traditionally, the way that they would contact respondents would be by calling them on landline telephones. Some of you might not know what a landline telephone is. It's the type of phone that would be plugged into your wall in a house. Um, this is pre-cell phone time, so like old-fashioned phones. And, well, a lot of people don't have those anymore. Young people are the least likely to have landlines. I haven't had a landline ever since I moved out of my parents' house. Um, so how would I be contacted? Well, it would be through my cell phone. But again, younger people are less likely to answer their cell phones. And I'm definitely not picking up when some random number I don't know is calling me. So I've never been, well, maybe I have been contacted, I just don't know. But I've never actually been part of one of these surveys because I don't answer my phone. So there's this challenge of contacting people which is something that is yet to be totally solved by this next generation of pollsters. So again, that's just something to keep in mind. Overall, we're thinking about how polls matter and how they can be somewhat trusted, but as always, you know, have a healthy skepticism would be my suggestion. Till next time, this is Ben. A La Money Production. All right, thanks again for watching this video. I appreciate it if you hit that like button, if you subscribe, if you just have a split second to do that for me. Thanks a lot. See you guys in the next video.